what's up y'all it's izzy and so i had this video filmed once again i had this video filmed but i had to go do something stupid and say that i was going to talk about the building materials that i was using on the ceiling in this video and that is just not true nor accurate so i will not be doing that today and Perhaps I will film the next segment, but instead you will be seeing me in the past explaining it because I probably did a better job then when I was prepared to talk about it, even though I wasn't prepared because I didn't write a script because I was before I was on the idea of writing scripts and because I was on that idea then I didn't feel like writing a script for this video now. So enjoy. I want to get this done. And I want to share this information with you all, I guess I should say. Like, I really, I'm excited to get this information down. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about the ceilings, um, framing out the ceilings, and why I chose to do what I did, and why I chose to cover material with, with the material of what I did. First and foremost, let me say that taking out the ceiling is such a daunting task. Like, I know it is a daunting task. Like, I went back and forth like 16,000 times. Like, do I really want to do this or do I not want to do this? Do I really want to do this or do I not want to do this? And ultimately, I decided that I did want to do it because that metal to metal contact, which you may have heard me talk about before in my other videos, and if you're not, I'll explain. Um, metal to metal content, basically, the metal beams that are in the roof, of course, there's metal on top of the roof, and metal beams that are on the roof, just basically send heat straight through to the metal on the inside of the roof, heats it all up, disastrous. You just got a pizza oven inside your home. And I don't know about you, but I don't like being cooked. I decided that I was gonna take it down. And if you need to know more about how I took it down, you can check out the demolition video. Um, but putting everything back up, I didn't know what to do. Now, a lot of people, they will put some sort of thin plywood or something, maybe even a one by along the bottom of the curve um, but I didn't really want to do that because head height that's one thing that I wanted to save and I might end up regretting that later because my material that I put on my ceiling is still inadvertently touching the metal but it's not metal touching the metal so it's not in my opinion I don't think it's as bad I could be wrong and I could have done all this for no reason I was really not. someone who's watching this might say she did it wrong and if they say that then please take better advice. Um, but basically what I did is I got it down to a science and I cut uh, pieces of two by twos, um, which in my case, I just take two by fours and split them down the side because I find that's cheaper. That's easier for me since I have a table saw and my hardware store doesn't have a good selection of two by twos anyways. But I decided to take these and butt these up. So like here's the metal beam. I decided to butt them up on either side of the metal beam and I cut them to a specific length. I can't remember what it was now. It was probably somewhere like around like this length. And I found that worked really well to put in the middle um, and then work it out. I think there might end up being like six on each curve and each curve is, um, there's 10 curves in my bus. So that turned out to 60 boards, which I calculated as, um, sorry, not 60 boards, six chunks, 60 chunks, but I calculated that as one board per run, which was 10 boards, which was five two by fours. And that was the most cost effective route that I saw at the time. Um, then on the other side, sometimes if I would, was framing on this side of the beam, I put one and we put two on the other side of the beam. Um, that way we could run a beam across to attach my roofing material to later, which I will show you in just a second. But to attach these to the metal beams, um, I used these once again. Um, I say once again because I just talked about framing the walls. Um, but these are really good. And like I said in the wall video, I would really recommend that you get some sort of uh, drill that you can plug in to use these. These are self-drilling screws. I'll actually get one out and show you on this video. Um, these are self-drilling screws. I recommend though, if you're going to use them, that you drill a hole through your wood first and then put them in because one it'll make it easier to hold up there and you won't be like me like butter fingers all over the place also it will save the self-drilling bit the time and energy of going through the um wood and just allow it to use all of its little um wings and everything to drill through the metal that was probably very bad terminology you can tell what my carpentry skills are at this level like those are so easy to use like they're not I wouldn't say easy like I cannot I could not drill them into the ceiling um I had to get my dad and my papa to help me out with that because I'm not tall enough so I can't put the correct amount of pressure on it 
to drill it in. Um, but they were super easy, and I helped hold them up while they do it. So, while they did it, so like you know, it was it wasn't that hard. like it went by rather quickly. But then, of course, um, in order to make a place to secure the new roof panels to the roof, which was one of my other hesitants in taking out the roof, there needed to be beams running down the middle. So in order to do that, we of course put um, you know a board on this side of the metal beam and on the other side of the metal beam so we could run a board down the middle. So in order to do that and make it as clean as possible without like the splitting and all of that mess, I just went ahead and used a pocket hole jig, um, which if you guys don't know what that is, it looks a little bit like this and it has a little collar on this part so that when you drill it in, um, it'll stop it at a certain point. But it basically makes these little, what would you say, pockets in the board. And then what you're able to do is you're able to take these special screws that they make for it. These are of course the Craig Jig brand because that's what they have at Lowe's. Um, and I don't know if you can see the little image here. You probably can't tell much about it from this thing. Um, but you, it, um, it connects into this little hole and goes through. That way, I used that to build my couch and I knew that they were sturdy. Um, and that way everything would be good in the roof situation. And so in between everything, I did go ahead and go with the rock wool insulation again. As I mentioned in my previous video on walls, the reason I chose rock wool is because um, I knew that it will repel water, unlike fiberglass. Fiberglass will just soak it up. Um, and if you've never been around a bus or been exposed to a bus before, they will sweat with temperature changes. Um, I know sometimes I would go camping with my grandparents as a kid when they had their bus and we would go to sleep at night and wake up the next morning and there would be water dripping on our faces because the bus had sweat overnight. So I, that's one thing that I didn't want to worry about is condensation and mold. And so I decided to go with the rock wool. I figured that would be the best choice for me personally based on past experiences. Let me tilt this up just a little bit so you guys can get a view of me and hopefully the ceiling at the same I hope that was in some sense coherent. Uh, if I left any questions unanswered, free, feel free to ask them below. And of course, if you had a different way that you did your buster, you have a different suggestion. I make these videos for people who are inexperienced or who are like me, who know what they're doing, but like don't know what they're doing. Um, and maybe even experienced builders who are trying to rack their brains and going through of like, oh my gosh, there's this list of materials. What could I use? What would be beneficial? What would not be beneficial? What are other people doing? Um, and I just, I hope this is helpful to anyone. If it's just helpful to one person, that would make it all worth it. Um, Cause I know it would have been helpful for me when I was looking at things and trying to make finalize, finalizing and making decisions. I know it would be really helpful for me um, to have something like this, have a resource like this. Um, and of course, if you have any other questions that maybe aren't related to this video that you would like to ask me, feel free to reach out to me on my Facebook page. I will link that below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to start saying please like and um, subscribe if you want to see more because of course like buttons helps me move up in the algorithm and I would really appreciate um, spreading the message and getting um, the word around to a lot more people. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.